Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at how we can do optic detection on small optics. So I know a lot of you guys have struggled trying to get optic detection to work on smaller optics. You might have your pre-trained models, you try to run it also with your own custom models. But once the optics get to a certain size, you can't really detect them any longer or if they're very far away from the camera. So I have a solution here that we're going to go over. It is a framework called Sachi. I'm going to create a bunch of videos just trying to test it out with YOLO V8, YOLO Nash, a bunch of different optic detection models. We're going to see how to run it on a single image. We're going to go through some Google Cola notebooks. So I'm also going to create a video where we're going to grab a video, basically detect every single object in every single frame for the whole video. And the last cool thing that we're going to do is going to run it on a live webcam later on. So definitely remember to hit the subscribe button on the video. So let's just jump straight into it. Let's get started and see how we can do optic detection on very small objects. So we're just jumping straight into the Sachi GitHub repository. So this is the framework and library that we're going to do optic detection with to be able to detect small objects. So let's just scroll down. We can see an example. We can also see all the codes that we have in here. The main idea behind it is that we're going to take our image going to divide it into a number of tiles and then we're going to have a sliding window going over our whole image. So before when we're just doing traditional optic detection on a single frame, we just take our full image, throw it into the model, we get our outputs out, draw our bounding boxes and then that's pretty much it. So we're just doing a single pass to our model but this is not really sufficient, we can't do that if we have very small optics. So if we just go a bit further down to start with before I explain a bit more. So here we see a comparison with YOLO X and also YOLO X with Sachi. For YOLO X, we're only able to detect a few cars here driving on the freeway. So again, we're only able to detect the larger cars, even the one here in the middle. We're not able to detect that because it just gets too small to be able to run from a single image. When we're doing inference with our optic detection models, we often use 640 by 640 image resolution. So that's not really a high resolution, but when we're going to do these tiling windows, we're going to be able to detect these very small objects. Even here in the background, I can't see the cars for myself. I can only detect the cars here on the freeway, but we have some cars over here in the background. I'm not even able to see that because we have the Sachi method, which just zooms in, does the tiling windows, and it's able to extract way more information that I can even see here on the image. So this is pretty cool. It's very useful if you want to detect very small objects in your images. And I know a lot of you guys have had problems with that before, but there's one bottleneck and one downside. Everything comes with a trade-off. So right now we get more accuracy, but that also reduces the inference speed. So all the code behind this framework is not really complicated. Under the hood, everything that it does is just take a window, a sub window in the full frame. So let's just start in the top left corner and then it's basically just going to slide a window. So it's just going to take a subset. We can take a relative resolution, upscale that image as well and so on. But we're going to take a sliding window and then we're just going to slide it from one side to the other. Go one down, slide it again. So this is basically how a convolutional layer works in a neural network as well. So when we're dividing it into tiles, we can also have overlap. So we can have overlap in between our tiles, which act like just means that we won't get double detections. We can filter that out as well, but we won't end up act like just cutting right in the middle of a detection. So we split it in two. That is also resolved in here with the Saji framework you can use out of the box. But the downside, let's say that we divide our image into five tiles. It is going to take five times as long as just doing it on a single image, maybe a bit lower because you can act like just downscale or have lower resolution for your tiles. But the main idea is that we're instead of just taking a single image, we're going to take five images, pass that through the model, extract the results, combine them into the global frame. So once you have done it on a tile, we also need to rescale the coordinates back again. So the whole code behind it is just divide it into tiling windows, slide it over. You can just have two follows running with a tiling window. Make sure that you're actually like handling the overlaps as well and so on. So we need some resizing. Then take the coordinates, take the predictions, scale it back into the full image frame again. So that is all the technical stuff going under the hood for this framework. You can see a lot more examples in here. Google Colab notebooks for running it with different optic detection models. Again, I'm going to go through one of the notebooks in this video. We're going to create some other ones where we're going to grab it, extract it into our own custom Python script to run it on videos and also a live webcam. So we will still get pretty good performance if you're running it on a GPU and so on. You'll still get very high inference speed it will just be way slower compared to just doing it on a single image, but the resolution, the accuracy, 
is significantly better and now it can be used for a ton more use cases in our computer vision projects and applications. So that's enough talking. Let's just jump straight into the Google Colab notebook. First of all, let's just connect to the runtime. We're not going to use a GPU in this example. Let's just run with the CPU. First of all, we need to do some preparation. We need to pip install Torch, Saji. The Saji framework can just be pip installed directly um, here with Saji and also Yolo 5 You can also use Yolo 8 or whatever model that we want to use. First of all, we're going to import some different stuff from Saatchi, how we can download the Yolo v5 models from Autolytics, auto detection model, read image, download from URL, and all those things. We specify the model path, set out the model, download the model to our local environment or here in our Google Colab notebook. We can download some images from a URL. You can also drop it directly in here, or if you're using your own local machine, just specify the path to the image that you want to run inference on. So this just go in, pip install it, let's run it. We have connected to our runtime. We're just going to run these blocks of code that we already went over. So now download our images. Now we can do standard inference with YOLO v8. So we have our auto detection model from pre-train. So it's, this is basically using like Hawk and Face under the hood. We specify the model type, model path, confidence, and the device that we're going to run. So either CPU or GPU. If you're running a Google Lab notebook, you can also use the free GPU directly. After that, we can go in and get a prediction. We just need to specify the source that we want to get a prediction from and the model that we want to use for doing the prediction. We can also go in and do it in other ways. So here, for example, we load in our image. We read in the image as a NumPy array and then just throw it through our detection model and we will get the exact same results back again. So right now, we're still doing some setup up here at the top. If we go inside the Saatchi GitHub repository, let's try to see if we can find the file where it does all of the slicing. Right now, we can see that we have this slicing.py, we have prediction.py, predict.py, uh, auto model, and so on. So this is everything that is going on under the hood. We also have some utils, but slicing is for dividing the images into tiles. We have the predictions for doing predictions with the different models. So it's both supports like the different YOLO models and so on. We will go more into details with that in another video where I'm going to show you how we can swap it at the model, run it on videos and also on a live webcam. So this slicing.py is what is doing all of it. So get slice boxes. So this is the tiling windows that are talked about. Annotate inside slice. So let's say that we want to draw the bounding boxes. We also need to rescale our coordinates back into the original image. Process code annotations if we're using that. We create a class here of a sliced image. So we're just going to have a list of sliced images. You can have a for loop just running through each individual sliced image inside of that array. And then you can do your predictions. So you can also use your own models, the Autolytics framework and so on. You just get an, a list with all the images, take a for loop, run through it, do inference, take the results, rescale it back, and you're good to go to use it in your own applications and projects. And I will have all the code available on my GitHub. So definitely check it out under the video here. And then you can use it directly in your own applications and projects. So yeah, pretty much starting pixel here. So where the sliced image is actually like starting, how you can get an item from it, sliced image. We have some different input parameters. So like the overlap height ratio, overlap width ratio, the slice height and slice width. So that could be like 640. Let's say that we have a 1280 by 1280 image. We want to slice it into um, a number of different sizes. So that could be like uh, 400 by 400. It's going to do all the calculations, all the slices automatically. And we can also specify the overlap size. So let's say that we want to have 50% overlap in all our slices when we're doing our tiling windows. So we have a bunch of different arguments that we can set in here and it's going to do all of that automatically. Let's go back into our Google Colab notebook. We have to restart the session. And now we can then set up our Saatchi framework, download our images and the model and then we can run our detections. So now we have our results. Let's just try to go down and print it out and let's see what we get. There we go. We run this block of code, misspelled it. So we just have results and not results. There we go. So now we can see that we have this class Saatchi.prediction. So once we have our prediction, we can also just export it so we can see it in the Coco dataset. So to Coco annotations. There we go. We can just call this functionality on top of it. And now we should be able to see all the bounding boxes. We have the image ID, the bounding box. You see the bounding box here, the four values. So the top left corner and the bottom right corner. This might actually like be the width and the height. Yeah, that is the width and the height in the Coco data set. We get our confidence score, the category ID, and also the category name. So we're detecting cars in this image here with a pretty high confidence score. And this is how you can extract all the results. Now we just get a list with these dictionaries where you can go and extract 
all the individual keys. We can also do it directly on a NumPy array if you already have it in OpenCV. So this is how we can use it in our own custom Python script. So let's say that you're using OpenCV to load in a video webcam. Again, as mentioned, I'm going to do a video where we're going to do all that. The code will be available on my GitHub and it will be out in just a few days. So yeah, we can also go in and run this directly. It will give us the exact same results. Now we can go in and ex export the visuals for the results and just create an image. There we go. So results.export visuals is going to do all the annotations on top of our image. And this is act like the results that we get. But again, this is without Sachi. So these predictions are act like just the predictions from the full image. So as we know from traditional optic detection, but now we can see that we're not able to detect all the cars in the background, even some of the cars over here to the left, even though they seem to be relatively easy to use. So now we can go down and do sliced inference so we can get get slice prediction directly from Sachi. So we're import this function from Sachi. And all it's doing is taking the image, dividing into slides, sliding it over with for loops, taking care of all the overlaps, the rescaling, upsizing, transforming the coordinates from the sliced image to the global frame and so on. But that is also pretty easy to do yourself. So you can specify the path here, the detection model, the slide height, the slide width, and also the overlap. So right now we're just going to go with 20% overlap in between all the individual tiles. So let's run this, let's get the results, and now we can see some more down here at the bottom. Again, we can go in and print the results. So result dot to coco annotations. Run the function, and we should be able to see our detections as well. But now we get significantly more detections, as you can already see. So now let's go down and just run this one, export visuals again, and now we should be able to get our inference results with the Sachi framework. So now we're detecting a bunch of trucks here that have relatively low confidence, it can be filtered out by having a threshold for a confidence. Now we can see that we're detecting all the cars here in the background. They have slightly lower confidence score compared to the ones in the foreground, but these objects are very small and some of them it is even hard for just a human eye to distinguish between the cars and the objects from this view. So this can be useful in a lot of different applications and projects. Very have very small objects could be like dense objects as we have here, but it could also just be like sparse objects so far away that your object detection models are not able to detect it. So now we can go down and predict our results. So get our prediction results, how we can extract it and use it in our own applications and projects. So this is basically what we have been doing and what I just printed before. From, from our results, we can get our object prediction list. There we go. We can take the served index of that, get our bounding box, mask, score for our confidence score, and also the category ID. And then inside of that one, we can just specify which one we want to take. So let's want to so say that we want to take our bounding box. We can just specify dot B box, and we should be able to extract the bounding box directly. So now we both have a width and a height, and also the coordinates of our bounding box. So these are just some of the operations and functions that you can call on top of the result class or the instance that is going to generate from the prediction of the sliced windows. So right now, result to Coco annotations, we're just going to visualize the first three of them, exact same thing that are printed up at above when we actually did our prediction. Can also be converted to Coco predictions. So to Coco predictions, image ID equal to one, and we take the first three predictions. We get a dictionary, we just get a list with dictionaries, we can go in and take each individual key. So we can just index it directly. So let's say that we want to take the served element of that. So instead of three, we just want to take one. I need to specify a zero here. There we go. We're going to take the first index. And then inside of that, we just have a dictionary. Let's say that we want to go in and grab the bounding box again. Then we can just index it like this for our key and to get our value. There we go. We have our bounding box. And I think we can also extract the class ID. I'm not too sure how that looked. So let's just copy that one, run it again. And here we can see to extract the score. We can just type in score. It's going to get that. And you can just have a for loop running through all the predictions. This is just showing a single one, but you can just have a for loop running through all of this, extract the bounding box scores. You can visualize them yourself or use them in your own applications and projects to extract the results. So we can also go down and convert it to different annotation formats, but I don't really care too much about that. I normally just use the Coco 
format. Now we can also do batch predictions. Again, right now we're just running a single image through, but you can also have batches with multiple images. I'm also going to show you how you can do it on videos and webcams, as I mentioned throughout this whole video. Again, we're going to do the exact same thing. Now we're just going to have an image directory with a bunch of images instead of a single one. And it's going to take care of all of that. We can just call our predict function, specify the model type, model path, the device of the model, model confidence threshold, source image directory for all the images that we want to process in a single batch, slice height, slice width, overlap height, and also the overlap width ratio. We run this blob code, it's going to do the predictions, it's going to perform inference on our images. So right now we can see it's doing inference on three images. It's going to divide each image into a number of slides, so performing prediction on 20 number of slices. So each individual is going to be sliced, and then we process all of them in a single batch. So right now we can see the first image has been sliced into 20 slices, the second one 15 slices, the third one 15 slices as well. And now we can see that our images has been processed. Prediction results are successfully exported to runs predict exp as we have with the YOLO v8 and YOLO v5 models. So runs, predict, experience, visuals, and we can go in and grab these ones. So it's just going to be PNGs. So right now we can see this example it looks pretty cool. Small vehicles, we can go in and see the example and terrain.png. So here we can see the trucks. We might not be able to detect the truck here in the background with just traditional optic detection models. So right now we can see that this is pretty similar, but we're able to detect small objects with this Sachi framework. So I hope you learned a ton of this video here. I know that you guys want to learn how you can do update detection on smaller objects, and this is the way to go. I've not seen any other approaches where you're actually like able to detect the optics like here. So thank you guys for watching again. I hope you see one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy slicing.